Hey there, it's Bobby Legs, and welcome to another episode of Bobby Legs Loves Watches. And today, you and I will be taking a look at the Seiko Prospects Diver SBDC 171 or SPB 313. Now, this watch takes inspiration from a vintage model, the 6105-8000 automatic diver. Uh, Seiko has been cranking these out, these reinterpretations, the re these reissues of some of these vintage divers, and I think they're all they're all great. They're pretty much hitting them out of the park, and I feel like they did the same here. So let's get right into the specs we have, depending on where you measure, but I measured the diameter from the nine to the three here at 41 millimeters. You do have a case thickness of around 12.3, a length of 46.6 millimeters, lug width of 20 millimeters here, and you have this cushion style, this uh, slim down cushion style case that is brushed, and you have this nice, nice line here or curve um, that you see with the turtles. Uh, this is a like a mini turtle, if you will. Uh, holes at the end of the lugs here for quick strap change and something that I haven't seen um, in a while. Now, I'm no Seiko expert, uh, but I haven't really seen this kind of fine link bracelet here. And I'm only calling it fine link, and I think I mentioned it in the unboxing, is because I'm more familiar with Zen, and they have something very similar, uh, and they call it a fine link. Uh, I'm sure someone will correct me, and please do uh, put it in the comments below what technically this uh, bracelet is called. Um, but it has this uh, fine link, for lack of a better term, bracelet that doesn't really taper here, gets into this milled clasp, really good clasp that you'll see in these mid-tier divers, or what I call mid-tier divers for Seiko. So anything, I would say, like above a samurai or your classic turtle. Uh, the sumos, I believe, have... No, the sumos, they're, they're stamped. They're not quite like this. Uh, bracelet, so maybe above uh, what you'll see in a sumo, uh, but the 62 Moss, the 68 reissues, uh, you'll see these, uh, those mini um, marine masters, right? Uh, you'll see these clasps there. Uh, only two extensions, you'll see four on the others, on the other, like the 68 reissue, the mini uh, marine master, but two, two is fine uh, here. Now you do have a pin and collar system, which I remember uh, initially, when I was sizing uh, Seiko divers, uh, when I got into uh, collecting and collecting Seiko, very intimidating, but you watch a video here or two on YouTube on how to change it, you have the right tools, no distractions, and you're calm, it's fine. I actually prefer them. I prefer them now than, than even like a screw-in uh, link uh, uh, system. So anyway, yeah, once you, once you uh, change them up, uh, once you uh, size it, you don't really have to worry about it anyway, right? Uh, let's look at here at the back of the dial, and you have the classic Tsunami Seiko symbol here. This is powered by the Caliber 6R35 movement. It's a 70-hour power reserve, 21,600 vibrations per hour, 24 joule movement. Let's take a look at the dial, and this is where, well, actually, before we jump into the dial, because... I want to save that for last. Uh, you have this bezel here, black bezel. Nice, typical action that you'll get for Seiko. And it lines up, you know, and you have a little wiggle room here where you can get it uh, dialed in there for sure. So you have it lined in, lined up here. Four o'clock crown, uh, nicely knurled, not signed. First position will wind, second position will change the date, third position will change the time. Now let's take a look at this dial because I think this dial is excellently executed. You have this beautiful white dial that contrasts nice with the black of the bezel. White dial, applied indices as you can see here, and applied loom, applied loom on the hands. And you have this second uh, hand that has a little bit of a red uh, coloring there to give it some pizzazz, if you will. Uh, small three o'clock, I'm a small 4.30 uh, window here for the date, a little circle here uh, with the date in there and the uh, background is white as well. Uh, I like it. I, you know, it's, it's, it's very inconspicuous, um, but, but it's there. And, uh, and you may not like the size, you may not like the positioning, 
but I kind of dig it. It's a little bit different than what you see with the, some of the other divers that Seiko puts out. Uh, so I'll take it. Uh, I love the contrast of the dial. You have, again, the white dial, but when you have these um, borders around the indices that give it a pop and it's easily legible. The printing of the Seiko Prospects Automatic Divers 200 is very, very crisp. So are the minute track around the dial. Uh, the hands have that extra border thickness to the hands. Uh, so it really pops compared to everything else on the dial, especially. And I really, really like that. Again, it really, I can really tell the time fairly, fairly easily here, right? Or pretty easily, as easy as you can get uh, with this, uh, with this uh, setup here. So I really appreciate that. Uh, let's put this on my six and three quarter inch wrist. Um, now this watch, uh, I have a size for the owner, so it's a little bit tight on me. Uh, so let's put that in here. Um, but fits, fits great. Man, that cushion style case really sits great on my wrist. 12.3 millimeters, nicknamed the Slim Diver. A little slimmer than what you would see with some of the other Prospect Divers. Uh, so good on Seiko for doing that. And uh, because you have this slightly under 47 millimeter case uh, lug to lug, you're gonna fit a whole lot of wrists with this watch. I mean, this, you know, I'm six and three quarters, six and a half is no problem, six and a quarter is no problem, all the way down to six inches, probably even a little bit less. You're gonna find this watch very, very comfortable because it'll fit flat, it'll sit nice and, and proud on top of your wrist. And um, it's just, yeah, great, great looking watch and great fit. So I think they cast a wide net with this watch um, which was very, very smart to do for Seiko because some of their divers can get big. Um, let's get a nice little weight on here. Uh, the light is, let me see if I can get a little light there. So I'm, I'm getting, if, in case you can't see it, I have 142 grams as uh, it weighs for my wrist. Now this watch is gonna run MSRP around $1,100. There are places out there where you can get this for a discount. For example, Sakura watches, you can see this watch is low, in the low 800s, low to mid 800s with shipping. Uh, so that may be an avenue for you to take if you're here in the States. Uh, I don't know when this, this, I think it's gonna be released. I think it may be already released. We're in July, mid-July of 2020. It may, uh, 2022, it may have been released already in the States under the reference number SBB313. Uh, Probably can get a discount, right? Uh, typical Seiko discount when you go to uh, AD, especially in these times where um, you know the watch market is going to struggle a little bit because of the economy. Again, snapshot in time. If you're seeing this a couple years from now, it may or may not apply to that reasoning. But great, great watch. Uh, definitely recommend this piece. Fun watch. I, again, aggressive neural here. Yeah, very well executed. Uh, for the price point, especially if you can get it lower than that $1,100. Seiko is really knocking it out of the park here with these mid-tier divers, or what I call the mid-tier divers, the the reissues that we're seeing, the Mini Marine Master, um, and, and and in that range, I think they they found they found a great angle here and uh, a classic look, and I think it's going to appeal to a lot of people. Certainly appeals to me, and certainly got me in more interested or back interested into Seiko divers. I had lost a little bit of that. I had a little bit of Seiko fatigue and now I'm, I'm, I'm coming back and a big fan. This would look excellent on a rubber, black rubber strap, by the way, too. There's two other models that were released with the same uh, size uh, of, this, of this one in particular. There's one with a black gilded dial and then one with a, a black dial and uh, and just comes with a rubber strap. So that that would be the move I would go. I would go with the one with the rubber strap. Save a, maybe save a little bit, and uh, and, and it's more of a, the classic look uh, for this watch. Anyway, anyway, guys, let me know what you think about this watch. Please put a comment below, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. If my channel is new to you and you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and click that bell icon to get updates when I upload new videos. I love making these videos and I hope you like them too. And also, if you want to support the channel, please buy me a cup of coffee. The link is in the description. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.